Okay, first of all, I want to talk about Rain Man. Now, Rain Man is a film released in 1989 featuring Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. Respectively, they play the characters of Charlie and Raymond. These are two brothers. In the film, Raymond is portrayed as your stereotypical autistic person. In fact, due to the blockbuster success of the film, his character became the stereotype of autistic people. Okay, so in the film, it follows the story of the two brothers, Raymond and Charlie. It starts off Charlie being a kind of scummy automotive salesman and he's trying to screw Raymond out of his um, inheritance by just getting him to sign it over to himself. Uh, he meets him for the first time in the film. He didn't know he had a brother until about the inheritance. So they meet up and he feels that um, this is a person that's clearly not right in the head. That's what he thinks and he thinks they can take advantage of him. And throughout the film it shows the progression of him learning what an autistic person you really like and it shows you a good example of a journey of coming from not understanding it to understanding it quite well. Rain Man does a lot to create the stereotypes that still persist until today in our modern media. It gave off the idea that every single autistic person, which was very misunderstood at the time, is this crazy smart person who's fantastic with numbers but in exchange lacks basic social skills they can't talk properly, they act weird. This is not the case. In fact, very few cases of autism are like this, but it is nowhere near the majority. But due to the blockbuster success of the film, it was um, created in the media's mind that this is how autistic people are, and therefore that's how they were always shown for a long time. The film shows that autistic people are different in a way, and portrays it with a negative stereotype that they're crazy smart, good with numbers, all that is with the toothpick scene. It's early in the film and Raymond and Charlie are in a shop. A packet of toothpicks is knocked on the floor and within seconds Raymond can look at the toothpick pile and count exactly how many toothpicks are in there. There's over 150 of them. Let me check. Sorry about the toothpicks. 82, 82, 82. 82 what now? How much is this? Toothpicks. A lot more than two toothpicks, right? Of course. 246 total. Good change. However, despite what I've just said, the Rain Man is not entirely bad. There are parts of the movie that are good and reflect on autism in a nice way. It was based as it can be reflected in a movie from the 80s. At the end of the film, we see a scene where they're getting on a train. We have Charlie saying bye to Raymond. Raymond's getting on a train and he's going away for a while. In this scene it helps show the human side to autism because throughout the film it's um, you've learned to meet Raymond better, you've learned what he's like and you see the human characteristics of him, the fact he's not just this incredible counting machine with no social skills and this is displayed in the end scene. It gets emotional between the two in a sort of way, Charlie seems like he's going to miss Raymond, he's made him his lunch and packed his bags for him. And this is a good example of how the film put across to people the more human side of autism. I guess I better give this to you. Okay, you're gonna have to carry this now. It's, it's got your cheese balls on it, your apple juice, notebooks, pens, and who's on first video that, that, you, that, that you like? Who's on first very funny? I told you it's funny. Moving on, I want to talk about Skins. Skins is a TV show from the 2000s and uh, it's a lot more modern TV show than Rain Man was a movie made more than 20 30 years later. As a result it's got a much more modern mindset where autism was a lot more understood in the media and in society. As a result the show makes a conscious effort to be more fair and representative of autism and show what it's like more accurately. This can be seen with uh, character JJ. He is autistic and uh, the show goes out its way to show you that he is just a normal person who happens to have autism. He's not this genius or someone that can't be out on the own in public. He is a normal person. Uh, this can be seen in an episode dedicated solely to JJ, where it follows from his perspective and you just see what it's like to an extent of what someone with autism looks like. Of course it doesn't cause all cases. But he is a more mild autism, which is more common than the severe cases, so it shows that that is not just severe autism, that's the only thing that exists in society. 
I'm JJ, and with regard to mathematic aptitude, I'm in the top 0.3% of the population, which is an interesting demographic statistic because, paradoxically, my communication... Wait, I mean... Sesame Street does a good job in that, but it also does a good job in representing anything and unrepresented part of autism in a way. Because when you think of someone that's autistic, you think of a guy. In fact, only one in four autistic people are female, so introducing a character who is female to the show reminds people and creates that idea that it's a thing both genders suffer from. If not equally, with the majority of men, there's still a lot of females out there who are autistic and they can't be forgotten. You can see this well in the introduction to Julia in Sesame Street with her first scene of them um, explaining all this to the cat. Julia likes me very much. Oh, well, you two are just meeting for the first time. Oh, so she's shy. Oh, I get that. I can feel shy sometimes too. Well, <laughs> with Julia, it's not just that. Mm. You see, she has autism. Mm. She likes it when people know that. Autism? Well, what's autism? The first record of autism came about in 1797 by Jean-Marc Gaspard Etard, a French phys physician who studied a boy named Victor, who was also known as the Wild Boy of Avalon. He's shown several symptoms of autism, who spent his entire life in the woods near saint surin seran in France. In 1943, child psychiatrist Leo Connor comes up with the theory that children get autism from parents being cold and not affectionate enough towards their children after studying 11 cases of children and most being unsociable and withdrawn. This then creates shame and stigma for families with autistic children and as a result, most children are sent away to institutions for their own good. London-based cognitive psychologist Lorna Wing made an appeal for more support to be made available for children and people with autism. She carried out her own research with her colleague Judith Gold. Lorna had a daughter named Susie who had autism. A paper produced by Hans Aspergers, who ran a residential school for autistic children in the 1930s in Vienna. In this paper, Hans Aspergers describes autism as a lifelong conditioning requiring support and accommodation, which in turn causes people to drive away from Leo Connor's refrigerator parents' theory on autism. After discovering Leo Connor's theories were false, Lorna Wing and her husband John worked with the American Psychiatric Association to broaden the criteria for diagnosis to show the diversity of autism spectrum. In the late 80s and 90s, changes were made to dismiss Leo Connor's theory and autism was made more aware to the general public. Clinics for autism diagnosis was introduced and people making it easier for people to get help. Hello, my name is Anna McIver and today I'm here with Charlene Tate from Scottish Autism to ask some questions. So, hello Charlene. Hello Anna. Um, can you tell us, a bit about, about, tell us a bit about what you do here? So, I am the Deputy Chief Executive of Scottish Autism and my job is to support really the, whole, the development of the whole organisation. Um, in particular, um, I work around things like practice development, uh, practice based research and I do a lot of policy work uh, with the Scottish Government and looking at how we can affect change more widely in society through engaging with um, policy and government, influencers, the autistic community, um, parents, anyone who really has got a interest, a vested interest in autistic people, we would engage with them and understand from them what the needs of the, the, the different parts of the community are. Um, but I've also got kind of overall responsibility like all the senior leadership team have for the, the all the aspects of the organisation. Okay, brilliant. Do you feel that people with autism are represented fairly within the media? Uh, talking about like certain films and the way they're impacted by the media? Yeah. I think this is a really, really complicated question because I think if we think about films there was a lovely piece of research that was done a number of years ago that looked at a number of films that autistic people were represented in. And for many of them, they followed the same pattern. So it would generally be a child. Mm -hmm. um, the child would somehow be um, separated from their family or their caregiver. The hero would connect with the child and form a special relationship with the child and would almost be like a saviour for the child and then you know that suddenly there would be a breakthrough in their, their communication. 
And on the surface of it, that isn't very helpful because that's not really what autistic people are, are, are like. However, um, a bonus of that is it draws attention to the fact that there is something called autism and there are autistic people. Mm -hmm. I think that there, it's become a bit more sophisticated uh, as, as the years have gone on. Um, I can think of a number of films where the autistic person or programmes is represented as being very successful, uh, very intelligent, very able, um, and you know having a life, having relationships, having families. Um, and that hasn't always been the case. Autistic people have often been portrayed as being loners, very isolated, very shut off, disconnected from the world. Mm -hmm. And most autistic people I've met are not like that at all. Um, so I think there are some challenges with the, the portrayals. The classic one is obviously Rain Man, and it's often trolled out as being a sort of stereotype. However, in some ways that's what it is. It is a stereotype because it's a stereotype of who that particular autistic person was, it's his identity mm -hmm. um, and actually what that did was was let people see that on the surface of it as an autistic man he didn't appear to be very able but he actually had a lot of skills and not many autistic people have got the savant skills that the character who actually represents a real life person yeah. has but what it leads you to is oh, autistic people do have skills and strengths which for a long time I think have been neglected. Mm -hmm. I think that um, autistic women are very rarely portrayed in films uh, unless they're biographical yeah. or autobiographical um, and I think that that's an area where um, in, that reflects society because there's a lot of ignorance really about the fact that women can also be autistic um, and they can be mothers and they can be in employment and they can be you know, in society and uh, also be autistic because often what the films do is portray a, quite a male stereotype of, of autism. So I think that the, there is the, that kind of film and entertainment part of it, if you like. Um, and then there's things like how the press report on uh, incidents that might involve autistic people and often I think they make more of that than than they really need to. Yeah. So, you because you're saying about the representation of people in the, in the autism in the media, do you think this has a negative impact on the, on on people and how people are perceived by the public? I think it can do. I, I think it. it I'll, I'll deal with the negative thing first because yeah. I think there are some points. So I think the the negative things it can do is lead people who don't have a lot of contact with a lot of autistic people to think that that's what all autistic people are like. Um, so I don't think it, it, it helps with uh, understanding the, the, the spectrum and often what they do is pick out a feature of, of the person so they might have a savant skill and be very brilliant at mathematics or they might have a particular way of using language or communicating and this can often lead people to think that's what all autistic people are like. So I, th I think that's negative. I, I think the positive, potential positive side is that it must be really challenging to be part of a, a, a group, a community that you never see reflected on television or film. Yeah. And so if you're an autistic person and you see an autistic character, uh, meaningfully and genuinely woven into the story of a film, then I guess that could be quite self-affirming. Um, but I think the difficulty is often the autism that, and the fact that the person's autistic is a kind of almost like a story device rather than, you know, it's a, a dramatic device rather than really about the character being developed as being that kind of neurodiverse type type of individual or neurodivergent type of individual. So I think there are some negatives and some barriers, um, but I think that there there are some positives or there could, there could be some positives too. All right, great, great. Um, do you think the media has helped to make people aware of the condition and how it can help other people with it? I think that if we think about the media in the broadest sense, then potentially, yes. Um, as an organisation, 
we are fairly regularly in the press, on television, on radio, talking about autism and autistic people. And I think that kind of portrayal, factual if you like, um, and, and we often have autistic people that engage with our organisation who come on those kind of things with us or who in fact they're invited on and then we're invited with them. So, you know, I think that kind of, in the media, often the angle in the media is there's a problem, something awful's happened and the person was autistic or, you know, there's a kind of negative portrayal. So I think that we're not quite there yet in terms of um, some of the, the very skillful, excellent work that autistic people do um, being highlighted in the same way as the problems, if you like. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much then, Charlene. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.